What he is telling you is that you need to be strong and of good courage. He's sharing with us that as we go forward in the time that he's given, he's giving us the breath of life. If we were to see 2020, we need to be strong in the Lord, strong in his word, strong in our faith, strong in our prayer life. Now let's also go to John chapter eight. I wanted to go to John chapter eight because the Lord put in my heart, a lot of people who may listen. Yes. Do you know the Lord? You are in churches of worship week to week, but there are also those who listen to milkshake Monday, maybe just out of curiosity, maybe because, Hey, I want to see what they got to say today. But I pray that something is said to help you understand that God is drawing you. The Holy spirit is drawing you in John chapter eight. Verse 1 through 11, you have a situation where there have been some church folks who know about an adulterous affair going on, man and woman having sex. One of them is not married to the other, so they're having adultery. And they think they're going to do something with Christ, where they're going to catch the person and bring the woman and accuse her in front of Christ, and they want to see his reaction. Well, you may say, what does that have to do with 2019 and the transition to 2020? All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us have habits and situations that we would not be proud of if they would have put it on the jumbotron and show everybody what's going on in our lives and what's going on in our thought lives, how we're behaving ourselves when nobody's looking, how we're speaking to others when nobody's uh, in earshot to hear that, that we may know. We all are sinners. In this case, we find that we have a woman in adultery and maybe this is not her first time she's had sex with this guy. Maybe they have a pattern. Maybe she's done it. Maybe he's done it a lot. But in this case, a woman's been brought to Jesus. All of us, why I say that is because in 2019, you may have found yourself in a position where Satan has said, because you are a sinner, you are not worthy to come before Christ. You are not worthy to go to worship. You're not worthy for him to hear your prayers. You're not worthy to sing his praises. You're not whatever. The reality is that God came into the world for our salvation, to save us. He knew we were lost. He knew we were messed up with sin. And if we, he didn't come, all of us would be in hell. He didn't come to condemn the world. That's why people always say John 3, 16, they need to look at 17 too and 18 and 19 and 20 and keep reading because he didn't come with this condemnation that all the people are trying to say, oh, he's God and therefore I'm so unholy. He's never going to love me. That's a lie of the devil. Here we find this woman in verse four of chapter eight of John. It says, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. And they just assume he was going to get her because when you're caught in adultery, you're supposed to be stoned and killed. So they just got their rocks and they were just ready to kill her. But here's where you have to understand what 2019 brings. All of us can look at something in 2019 where we messed up month after month, day after day, minute after minute. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be fornication. It could be adultery. It could be lying. It could be cheating. It could be gambling. It could be pornography. It could be murder. It could be anything that you want to put on the list. No, nothing's higher than the other. But the point of it is we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And here's this case where this woman found that she was in a situation where she'd been sinning. And she got caught and people were accusing her. Religious folks were accusing her. But God, and this is what you have to realize as you start to contemplate, how is my 2020 going to be different? Am I going to hold on to the 2019, which thinks I don't need to be in the house of God? Am I going to hold on to the 2019 that says, you know, the way I've been doing my, my churching, the way I've been doing my fellowshipping has been good enough. The way that I've been having my relationship with God has been good enough. Good enough for you is not good enough for God. God wants a relationship with you. God wants a intimacy with you that, you know, I, I, I was, my daughter always says, don't wear makeup, mom. You don't need to wear makeup. If I were to wipe all my makeup off and just be raw and, and you see everything, that's how God wants you to understand. He already sees that part of you. He already understands every fabric of who you really are. 
your doubts, your fears, your anxieties, your loves, your hopes, your dreams, your disappointments. He knows it all. He knows it down to the, the, the you know how people say 30,000, 10,000. He knows it to the core of you. And he's not judging. He's saying, I knew who you were going to be, but I know who I want you to become. And here this woman caught in the very act in John 8. They're accusing her, telling her about the law, what's supposed to happen. And Christ throws in their face like you should, you should understand who he is. Verse 7, he says, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. We can all pretend to be judges of one another, but we're not. Christ is a judge. And just as he was seeing this woman caught in adultery, he was saying, I'm not judging you. I'm here to forgive you and save you. And it shows that in verse 8, it says, and again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. And then those who heard it being convicted, because all of us are sinning, but being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. Some of us who are closing the chapters on 2019 have to be willing to share one with the other that none of us is perfect. But we all have to trust and understand that we have God who's forgiven us. But we have to go to him and repent. We, he's not saying, just do your dirt and keep on doing your dirt. Because he's asking you to say, forgive. Forgive and ask him for forgiveness. You just can't keep doing your dirt. But what he is saying is that I'm not trying to judge you. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to love you. I'm trying to tell you that there's another way. One way, which is him the way, the truth, and the life. And look what it says here. Verse 10 says, when Jesus had raised himself up, she's down crying, humiliated, naked, been caught, like all of us in our, in our sin. We've been caught. Maybe people don't know the caught, but Christ knows what our dirt is, what our, our, our hidden sins, our sins that so easily beset us. But he rises up and he saw no one but the woman. But he saw her, just like he sees you and I. Not in these squinty, judging things, but he sees us. And he says to her, woman, where are those who accuse you? Where are your accusers? Where are the accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. She didn't just say teacher. She called him Lord because she realized that if anybody could accuse her, it was him. And he was saying, where are your accusers? All of the people around you that thought that they were so judgy and they could judge you, they had to leave because they knew they were no better than you. And in 2019, you have to understand, we are no better than one another. We are all in the same situation where our flesh needs to be put down, that we need to be saved through Jesus Christ and his blood. And he says, he says in verse 11, she says, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, y'all listen closely. Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Every time from the time that we saw in Joseph, he had to change with his father going and he had to take a position. Joshua had to go over the river Jordan. And this woman, sinner like us, had to go and sin no more. I didn't say she was going to be perfect, but she had to make a change to realize that Jesus was a Lord and he wasn't condemning her for that specific sin of the adultery. And the same with us. We have to start thinking in 2019 as the chapter is closing. We have to make some changes to go to where God wants us to go. The flesh wants you to go to hell. The flesh will let you fill up on all the stuff that's that you think that you need and you want to make yourself happy. And you realize you do all that stuff and you're no more happy for it. You're no more happy for more shoes, more clothes, more women, more men, more money, more cars, more houses, more things and things and things. And you feel just as empty. Because until you start to have that real relationship, the void in your life that you're trying to fill up with stuff can't be filled up with stuff. It can only be filled up with the love that, of the Christ that loves you enough that came and died and let you know, I didn't come to condemn you. I came to 
to love you. And the Father loved all of us so much that he gave the one son he had. It's not preaching. It's not teaching. He just loved all of us so much. Then he said, I'm going to give you what I have, what I love, my most precious son. I'm giving him to you. Not for you to be afraid for 2020, but for you to embrace 2020. Because whatever he's got in store for you, he's got Christ right there. Right beside him at the right hand of the Father, praying and interceding. That you'll know how much he loves you. How much he's not going to leave you. How he's going to take you places. How he's going to let you become. How he's going to elevate the position that you're in now to take you to the position he wants you to have. And that he wants to give you territory that he wants to give you protection that he wants to give you a new position in him so that you two can abide together that we can abide together without christ we can do nothing but imagine all the things that we can do as we pray and seek his face to do his will i don't know what will happen in 2020 i don't know what life and death things would happen I don't know what positional changes will happen, but I thank God that the scripture tells us even in that Joshua that he will never leave us or forsake us. So no matter what is going on or what will go on, go on, we know that we have Christ. Thank you and God bless you. Happy New Year and God be with you.